Just to let his word dwell on us richly in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We're to worship him musically. We're to proclaim his word musically. And so we want to train up our, our students, our children, to be able to sing skillfully with music, to understand what they're doing. Bible says sing with understanding. But it's all couched in studying God's word, growing up as Christian worshipers. Sometimes I know people are a little scared of music camp because maybe they're not a musical family, but it's, it's for everybody. It's a mix of real beginners and more advanced students, and they help one another that way. But the thing that really gives it weight and, and glory is that the, the whole week is focused towards a concert, a glorious presentation of the music we've been working on all week long. So there's this goal in mind. There's something that the students not just participate in, but actively create. I'll see students who come in who have had no musical experience. You can tell they're overwhelmed by first day. They're just awed by it because they've been part of something that is new to them and much larger than them, something they've not experienced before. And I would say the majority of times, those kinds of students come back because they've tasted something that's really glorious, a uh, foretaste of heaven. These students uh, are learning through the course of their time at music camp not to be music consumers, but to be active participants in making music. So not only to learn how to sing well, how to understand music as it's written on a page and how it comes together in a group environment, but to be able to take those experiences and have them be the seeds that are planted for their involvement their whole life in the musical life of the church. We want these students to be the next wave of worshipers in the church who know how to sing to God. Good afternoon, y'all. Welcome to Water Break We're with not, my wife, Annie. Not in the corner anymore, JP. Yeah. Come on, JP. <laughs> We're just going to give you the corner experience. <laughs> Uh, welcome to Water Break. As, as you guys know, uh, if you want to ask us any questions throughout the show, you're more than welcome to. We'll try to get to as many as we can in the comment sections. Yeah. Uh, also, if you want to email us, email us at Wrench Media, Wrench, R E N C H, no W. You put a W in, it's not getting anywhere. It's not Wrench Media at gmail.com. We love hearing from you. We can't respond to all emails, but, but thank you for being in con contact with us. Yeah. Well, we're going to be in Fort Worth at the Prodigal America Conference. Uh, October 31st through November 2nd. And lastly, if you want to support what we're doing, you can join the club, the Fight, Laugh, Feast Club. Uh, it's much appreciated. And uh, sometimes we feel undervalued when you don't join the club. So join the club. There's a lot going on there. You get free t-shirts, stuff like that. And it's, it's a lot of fun. So for today's show, today's show, we're going to talk about, I mean, it's kind of a top 10 list, but it's kind of like an unlimited top yeah, 10 list we're not going to get through 10 there's no way no but we have a lot and there's more to add it's to a long list yeah uh, but we want to talk with you about the top 10 truths we wish we knew 20 years ago regarding yeah. kind of health and fitness and and uh um you know kind of the related world that's going on in health and fitness I, you know at least i've always been super skeptical of the health world you know yep. especially when you ever see something like a 50 billion dollar in industry and you're like, okay, there's a lot of money there. That means likely with money sometimes comes uh, just marketing plays. Yeah. You know, sometimes with money just comes, you know, them wanting to sell their products and not actually maybe um, giving you what you need best or or maybe pushing you, advertising and pushing you into a certain diet program that you should have nothing to do with it in the first place. So yeah. uh, it's a big industry and there's, you know, a lot of confusion and a lot of half-truths in this industry. Yeah. Um, even 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 now, like I was just talking to our doctor. Um, I was just talking to him a couple of days ago, and I was like, I just after what happened in 2020, I just don't believe any doctor hardly at all. Yeah, you know, like the industrial medical complex screwed us in 2020. Yeah, all these doctors have been educated by the government, mm -hmm. and so no wonder they listened to the CDC and FDC, FDA when the government told them to shut down and to wear a mask or whatever. Is just from those who studied hard and got their doctor degree which is eight years in medical yeah, school it's a lot it's a lot of work and a lot of time they really buckled under pressure so we aren't going to get to all that stuff today but um uh, uh 10 truths i wish 
I knew we knew 20 years ago. I'll, I'll start with number one since that was that was mine. Yeah, the yep. number one is is yours. Number one, all 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 foundations are built on on Christ. If if we believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life, then we need to anchor everything we we do off that truth. We need to um, all our foundations, whether it's fitness or uh, work or podcasting, whatever we do, needs to be built and have a foundation rooted in Christ. And and that's why. Uh, especially the fitness world, I think pushes in bristles against this one because uh, First Timothy, uh, it might be Second Timothy. I have a head cold today, so I'm not as clear thinking as I'd like to. But um, it says godly exercise is more important than physical exercise. Very simple. And whenever you start, and this, you know, this principle can apply to anything, you know, work, um, sports, whatever you do. If you put it over Christ, if you put it over on top, and it's on top, and Christ is on bottom, you're you're already um, off, uh, you know, you're already cattywampus on how you're thinking about this world in regards to your health, your body, your life, and your walk with the Lord. And and the fitness world, you see, it's it's very me centered world. Yeah, you know, the gym culture, the mirrors in the gym are there for you. Yes, <laughs> you know, yes. it's, a, it's a very mm-hmm. me centered. The dieting is there for you. It's all me centered. And of course, we're for stewardship, but there's this me centeredness that needs to uh, to go. And I think this kind of strikes at the heart of it. So the number one would be godly exercise. Uh, is more profitable than physical exercise. What's number two, baby? That was good. Okay. These are in no particular order. And we just sort of, we do, we try to have lunch together on Wednesdays. Yeah. Okay. Even though we did, we did this Wednesday, but we, we hadn't for like a month because we we're too busy, but we try to have lunch. And so we were, it's talking. always on my calendar. Though. We were, yeah. He always, <laughs> uh, so we were like kind of making a list and it was pretty hilarious talking through and and the list could be so much longer but anyways these are not in any particular order um but the next one in is get annual blood work and i um i put this on the list because i think it is that important and helpful for everybody whether you are feeling good or not um and not all doctors would probably agree with me on that but i still think it's true and i wish so badly that i had started <clears throat> excuse me, getting annual, annual blood, blood work, work. Yeah. a long time ago, uh-huh. um, back when I was young. And it's funny because especially for women, the tendency is just to like, when they go through the period of having babies, they're yeah. like, you're poked and prodded and they're looking at your blood sugar and they're doing all these things. And, and, and yep. you get a little tired of it. You're under yeah. like, um, you know, uh, extreme scrutiny, I guess, uh, you know, by your doctors throughout your pregnancy. And then as soon as you're done having kids. It's like, we all just fall off the map because I work with women all the time who are like, Oh, I haven't gone to the doctor since I had my last baby. I haven't had blood work since I had my last baby. Like I have no idea where I'm at. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, like 10 years could have gone by and then men are even worse. Like, <laughs> like don't just, take me to the doctor. Don't make me go in there. Like, it's like, unless I don't know my leg is. is about to fall off. Or is it like, you don't want to know? Is that what it is? It's like, I don't want to know what you're going to find in that blood. I'm work. not going to answer that question. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think that answered that. So anyways, <laughs> I just think my opinion is that um, good strategic annual blood work is super helpful. And again, I mean, obviously go get it done if you're feeling bad. If you're like, yeah. I think something's off. I think my hormones are off. I think some, you know, something's going on. I'm tired all the time, whatever. Definitely go get blood work done because that can be very enlightening. But even if you're feeling fine, it's really important, number one, to know that you can catch things early that yeah. sometimes you would not be showing symptoms you know, four, I mean, like Gabe, like for you, I'm just going to use you for an example, yeah, go your for it. liver enzymes. When we finally, we got you to go in, in there and, and do your blood work. Your liver enzymes were pretty high. It's yeah. pretty bad, yeah. but you, you don't walk around really feeling that until, I mean, maybe you start feeling things if you're in like, you know, stage one liver failure, which right. is obviously not where you want to be, but it's like, you don't notice that a lot of people with like really out of control, control blood glucose. They don't necessarily feel that or the symptoms that they are experiencing. They don't know what that is. Uh-huh. They don't know to, to be like, oh, that's I have, I have blood sugar regulation problems. So you have really low vitamin D. You may not feel that. So there's some things that you will you can catch with blood work um, that you may not be outwardly symptomatic, but you'd still want to address um, in, in a preventative fashion. Yeah. Right. And also, yeah. even if you go and you get your blood work and it's like, oh, you actually look pretty good which sometimes is the case, then you have a baseline and then the next year you can see, okay, where am I at? And the next year you can see where you're at. And if you start to see trajectories like, okay, this year my fasted blood sugar was 85. Great. Next year, 89. Okay. Next year, 93. Mm, right. That tells up. you something. It's, going up. it's trending yeah, up, right? Yeah, yeah. And it might be slow and you might be still in range. All those three numbers are technically in yeah. range. Most labs, you're not out of range until you're at hundred, which is stupid in my opinion, but 
you can check catch trajectories. It's just smart. Um, it's fairly affordable. And um, I just we're talking like a hundred bucks, hundred to fifty bucks. Oh, I mean, usually, um, and sometimes insurance covers all of it. Sometimes yeah. you got to pay a little extra if you ask oh. for certain things. But it, regardless, it's yeah. worth it. Okay, it's worth it. It is so much better to address your health in a preventative yeah. way with, um, you know, measurable right uh, standards like this. Yeah. I just think it's super important. Um, and well, I, and, and related to this is like in the health world, it seems like things are so subjective. In a lot of ways, yeah. like how does it yes. make you feel? How does how are you feeling right now? Now, now there's some legitimacy right. to that. It's not like, yeah. but then it's like, okay, you know, um, take this weird mushroom. Well, <laughs> totally, something. totally. It's, it's a very subjective world. So, like the blood test, like what you're trying to do there is just see what you can, what you, yeah. what you can do in your life to make things objective as possible. Yeah, to be able to assess yourself. Well, it's just totally. like, let's let's get objective here. Well, really good example because you know I've said this before, and a lot of people say it. They say tests don't guess, and I really do agree with that. And I okay. I think you can become obsessive. You can take it too far, and you can be Sounds like, like a government drug rehab slogan. Tests don't guess. Yeah, no, but yeah. but it, you know, in this, you can't take it too far. But from for most people, I don't think they've taken it far enough. Yeah. And the more information you have, it's really helpful. So like a good example of what you're talking about, like ashwagandha um that's an adaptogenic herb it's wonderful people love it and everybody who it, it's it's known to help um calm cortisol down help manage okay. high cortisol which can be a very big issue for a lot of people yeah. however um a lot of people don't understand that if you know you could be somebody who's um, having adrenal problems you're dealing with stress and your morning cortisol for example is way too high ashwagandha mm -hmm. might be a great choice for you but so at some phases of adrenal fatigue i know some people don't like that term but i'll use it for a lack of a better word sometimes um their issue is actually their cortisol is too low you want yeah. um you know high-ish yeah. higher cortisol in the morning uh -huh. it's your get up and go hormone right and it's supposed to be the highest in the morning and slowly come down throughout the day so okay. if you're like kind of not doing well to the point that your body is uh, resistant to the cortisol that you have or it's not producing enough yeah i'm um, taking ashwagandha in the morning is gonna make you worse <laughs> yeah. so if you don't know you know what's going on in your body right. um that can be a problem okay. you know so that's just a perfect example of you know like everybody's just like oh this is good i'll take it oh do this i'll take it you know yeah. it is really good to test these things and I'm going to so uh, JP oh, actually asked, a, I think, a helpful question here. Um, and I'll just say, oh, starting at what age? Obviously, there's always ditches. Like, you don't yeah. want to become like a hypochondriac. What would you call it? Someone who always wants medical help and treatment. Uh, well, and, a hypochondriac, and, yeah, that's someone who's like, thinks you know, they have every sickness. They, they say yeah, have every sickness, yeah. but they're like, constantly paranoid. going to the doctor or whatever, yeah, you yeah. know. And so you don't want to in, instill that in your household at all. No. But um, at what age, JP says, that's at what age, really you know, good. should you start for you know, blood tests. That's basically. a great question. And I mean, I, I would just, what, what I'm going to give you is just my opinion. I wish I had data all the way back to when I was like 25. That's what uh -huh. I wish. Yeah. Uh, if like, for example, so I could have seen where in my journey of health and fitness, my thyroid started to go downhill uh -huh. because I only finally started getting blood work when my thyroid was tanked, tanked. and it yeah. would have been awesome yeah. to be able to lay that annual blood work down over the arc of my life uh -huh. and be like, mm, yeah. This is, this is, you know, maybe what triggered it. That kind of thing I think is really, really helpful. Yeah. I would love to see like, oh, the seasons when I was the sickest, where was my vitamin D? Yeah. Oh, my hair was shedding a lot really bad. What was my ferritin? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I'm a little bit of a nerd and I'll grant you that. I would say minimum by 30 uh -huh. because that's usually where people really start 30 to 35 is where yeah. people's health just j tends to take a turn. Yeah. But um, if you're able and you can afford it and you're interested in this stuff, I would say as early as 25 would be really, really helpful. And honestly, yeah. earlier, if you're having problems, right. If you're yeah, like, right. I think I might be anemic or why am I sick all the time? Or I think I might be hypothyroid. You, anyone can get blood work. My 13 year old daughter could go get blood work. And I will do that with my kids if I feel like there's something going on, but I'm not going to go take my 13 year old and have him stab her for no reason. If she seems perfectly healthy, <clears throat> right. if, yeah, that, yeah. if that no. makes sense. No, so, I don't want to do that either. No, you know? it, it seems kind of, you know, so barring special circumstances, I would yeah. say 25, I think that would be great. But 30 minimum i yeah. would say um you know but it's never too late to start i will say that you know why why haven't you thrown mr f's uh comments Gabe up on the screen i mean come on now 300 pounds i mean the, the reality <laughs> of it mr f is i'm a basketball player and i never <laughs> even in my prime bench that <laughs> So it was really nice uh, for him to just throw that in there. Yeah, yeah. Like just kind of randomly. Thank like, you for putting that on I the mean, screen. That's a manly I appreciate that. Compliment. You probably <laughs> benched 300 pounds. Okay, so so number number three. I got a whistle in here somewhere. Oh, here's that Mr. was F. that was that was not a very good whistle. My wife had the same experience and bad thyroid got her into holistic lifestyle and eating, got me into it too. Yeah, well, okay. I thyroid is such an issue. 
Um, in my opinion, it's highly underdiagnosed. And one of the biggest issues, uh, sorry, we're still on the blood work thing, but yeah, I know that's fine. Is, um, I'm really glad that you guys have gotten more into the holistic lifestyle and at least that journey got you there. That's great. Um, uh, one of the biggest reasons that people miss thyroid is because hypothyroid symptoms are um, so often associated with just the tired mom syndrome. Yeah, yeah. So you're just tired. It's just, or you're just a mom. You're just as yeah. part of getting older. It's just part of, you know what I mean? And so I think women all the time are like, well, this is just how I feel. I have yeah. so many kids. I'm tired. I don't sleep very well. I'm weight loss resistant. I mean, like I, I've always been cold. My hair's always fallen out. Like, like, like used it's just, to get until we started dealing with Annie's thyroid in a serious way. She used to get Renault's. Your, well, your it's, hands it's, it's Renaud's. Renaud's. I, I, that whatever. was my self-diagnosis. Yeah. I mean, that's actually actually an autoimmune. Renaud's yeah. is actually autoimmune. Okay. But one, and I never, her hands, whatever. Her hands my, would get white and cold. My like fingers and toes would turn yeah. um, hot, like white. Yeah. Um, and it was so uncomfortable. But yeah, that hadn't happened since you yeah. really started dealing with your thyroid. My, once yeah. my, I finally brought my, my, my free T3 up to the point where I'm not actually have a thyroid. That went away. Yeah. yeah just one yeah. of many things. So all that to say, you guys, one of the, re one of the other reasons that um, hypothyroid gets missed by doctors all the time is because they only measure TSH. And there are a lot of women, myself uh, included, at least I used to be this way, where TSH is in range, but your T3 is in the tank. So uh, it is worth to educate your, it is worth it to educate yourself a little bit on these kind of just basic blood markers so that when you go to ask for blood work, you can be specific. You can say, Hey, I'd like to get whatever annual, you know, panels you think are normal and a CMP is CBC with differential, maybe a lipid panel. That's what most doctors will order. But then you can feel free. And I think you should say, I would also please like to see my vitamin D. Yeah. I would like to see my free T3, not just TSH. Um, maybe I'd like to see my morning cortisol. Maybe I'd like to see my testosterone. That's horribly low in almost everybody. Ask for those things. Most doctors, most doctors, if you ask and you haven't had any t labs done and you're yeah. willing to pay a little extra if that's what it takes, sometimes it is, yeah. will be willing, but they won't. Um, oh, facet insulin, that's another one. It, it doesn't usually make the cut for it, most doctors won't do that. Right. They'll, they'll, they'll get a glucose um, and they'll get an A1C, which are helpful, yeah. but that facet insulin is so valuable. Uh -huh. um, you have to ask for that. So yeah. um, educate yourself enough to be able to kind of advocate for yourself and ask for specific things. I don't know. You, what you said that made me think of this, but I was talking to my my friend from earlier today, and uh, he was he grew up in the Baptist circles that you didn't drink and didn't smoke cigars kind of thing. Yeah. He said ever since I started having a little drink and a little cigar, I started my testosterone started increasing. <laughs> oh <laughs> really? Like, yeah, yeah. With a cigar? He, he, he said I don't know if it's connected at all, but he's like I started you know uh, having a little scotch and cigar and my testosterone that increased is actually really interesting and i is, wonder if there's any studies i, I, on I, that. I know i know or i wonder yeah. if it's like the, the just the effect of like i'm doing a manly i'm being thing, a man or, I'm or something manly thoughts <laughs> yeah, and your testosterone i don't know up. it did make me think That's like oh someone should study that yep that okay it's funny okay we need let's move on to the next so one, number three this actually might get to maybe some mr f's comments here but um uh uh this is this is something that the uh health world and if if we only listen to the the health world, if you only listen to the kind of the the health industrial complex, that fifty billion dollar industry, uh, I, I, you're going to be massively skewed. That industry is massively incentivized to, to get you to buy their products, yeah. their diets, yeah. their vitamins, whatever. Right. Um, and what is contrary to that industry is feasting. God, yeah. God has um, He's called us to feast. Um, he's called us to, uh, you know, Ecclesiastes 9, 7. He's, he, he, uh, Solomon says, go drink and be merry. He's referring to wine there. Um, uh, the, Lord's, the Lord's table is, uh, uh, God prepared it for us, and it has bread and wine. I, we joked on the show before, any, any diet that conflicts with bread and wine, I don't want anything to he's do with it. He's being very serious about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he there, could be like celiac, and he'd be like, nope, there's actually, I'm eating it. And you'll talk about more, more of this in a second, but just from like a worldview standpoint, um, feasting is glorious. Feasting is good for your kids. Feasting is good for your family culture. Feasting yeah. is good for your church. Like it, yeah. like it's, it you're, brings you're, people you're, together. You're, it brings people together, and yeah. you're celebrating the goodness that God's given. I mean, we're we're Christians who love the earth. We're yeah. Christians who yeah. love earthy things. We should, and feasting is such a fantastic way to build a family culture. Now, I, there's also um, health benefits to feasting. Of yeah. course, not 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 overeating. We aren't talking about overeating. We're talking about right. And uh, so why don't you talk about a little bit kind of the health benefits of, of feasting. Of feasting, yeah. It's so, it's so funny. And obviously, I mean, everything we talk about, you know, with regards to nutrition or, or health or feasting or this diet or that diet yeah. is so, um, every, it, like, it totally 
depends on context, yeah. right? Like, yeah. cause, cause there are, and we talked about this actually quite a bit, this sort of concept in our last, was it our last episode about whatever episode it was about Don't reverse, ask me. reverse yeah. like, which one was it? I uh, do six shows a week. I know, sorry. Yeah. I can't ask you when we talked about reverse dieting, we talked about this a lot. Like it completely depends on the context because I could be, you know, depending on who's listening, like, cause I could be looking at someone and talking to them and they, they literally might be, um, for reals feasting too much. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, like people can do that and it's really easy to do in America. Like you can mm. literally feast like it's the Sabbath every single day if you want to. Yep. And that it that that's that can be a problem, right? Where you're eating way too much too often, not very good quality food and because of that your health is yeah. is is not where it should be, right? And and so that that could be some of you. Um you know, and it's interesting because God does tell us to to feast once a week, right? Yeah. Sabbath. We we kind of associate the Sabbath with rest with, and, and feasting, feasting, right? Yeah. And and so that's regular, but it's not every day. So for yeah. those people, they need to note that okay, yeah. ice cream once a week, yeah. maybe not every night. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is a hard mm. concept. It's like and and but maybe, we're talking about like not feasting every week, every night. I'm we're gonna, talking about yes. special it's a, special uh, occasion. it's a special occasion yeah. where for us we we like to do sabbath dinners on saturday night and so we yeah. bring out the chocolate bring out the wine for the we kids like go we bring for out it. we go for it you know so, go for yeah, it annie usually has ice cream for me because she knows that's my favorite dessert he does um, love ice cream and, and so it, but also it i think it also kind of gets rid of any stigmatism you might be developing about food yeah um, yeah it's very healthy for a lot well okay yeah, because you can be yeah. like this OCD person about food, yes. and what we're saying is, yeah, be be disciplined, but then on Saturday night, have some fun with food. Totally, don't well, don't and, constantly look at it like it's this this almost enemy like, to you in yeah. your life. Like life is a well, and these are the other people, right? So yeah. we just spoke to the people who are maybe feasting too much. Very yeah. easy to do. We have refrigerators. We have yeah. processed food that never goes yeah. bad. So yeah. you can yeah. feast too much. And if that's you, you know, um, don't never feast, but yeah. look at the biblical pattern. I mean, God really. Um, it's not like that you read the Bible like a, a diet manual. It doesn't read that way. Mm. But there's so many biblical themes that are co continually show to be true in the world of health yeah. and fitness. And it's actually funny and it's right. annoying because people come to these conclusions way later. Like, oh, yeah, actually, if you have diet breaks or you give your clients, you know, one day off of their, you know, time restricted eating or whatever they're doing right. uh, a week, they actually do better. Right. Or, you know, I, what you need to do is have a gratitude practice. And it's like, <laughs> shut up, you guys. Breathe Just in, breathe read out. the Bible. Yeah. Like, I, like, we've known that like, God knew this from the start. Well, you know? here's another interesting thing is in, in the scriptures, you, you see that there was a lot of feasting days. Um, there's particularly three feasting days in the Old Testament. And then there's like annual times right? of feasting. Yep, yeah. annual. Yeah. And then there's times of of feasting. You know, there's a special feast that they came up with in, in the book of Esther, Feast of Purim. That was not a yeah. a God required feast, but they celebrated because God delivered uh the, the Israelites uh uh um from Haman. Right. And and so they made up their own holiday, which is fine. But uh, but you also look at the scriptures and you see, I think there was the one particular fast day that God required. There were other fast days, but one that God mm -hmm. required. And and so the, the balance of scriptures, you see more feasting than fasting. Yeah, you more just, feasting yeah, than dieting. That's an you interesting know? point. I mean, you know, there's other confounding factors though, yeah. because like back then you didn't have the kinds of terrible foods, <laughs> nutritionally speaking, that you have now. So there's different things you gotta reckon with. But I think that is a very valid point. Yeah. Um, but I just wanted to make the point that there are people who are feasting too much. It's good to feast intermittently. It, it can't be every day for most people. However, there is just a huge movement right now, and there has been for a long time in diet culture where it's constant restriction. And yeah, these are the people I, right. these that's are the people right. I spoke to when we were talking about reverse dieting. And I do think it tends to affect women more than they've men. been restricting themselves and dieting for twenty five years. They've been on a diet as long as they can remember, and, and they're just, still overweight. And, and it's yeah. yeah, sometimes they're, they're still overweight, which yeah. is even more frustrating. And then sometimes they are at the weight they want to be at, but only because they constantly, constantly, constantly restrict. It's yeah. just like eternal diet, yeah. eternal fast, eternal, and it's just it's. And food becomes an enemy instead it's, of a friend. Yeah, it's you know? really, really sad. And and I will say to to your point and to the point we made when we were talking about reverse dieting, a, a lot of times, if you don't feast sometimes, uh, when your goal is to lose weight or get to this body or whatever, uh -huh. um, that actually sabotages you because how, how our, so? Well, just like we with you know that whole concept of like um, depressing metabolism. Like if uh -huh. you don't at least intermittently 
and how frequently probably depends, you know, is needed probably depends on the person. Yeah. I think the once a week kind of pattern in the Bible is a great kind of starting uh -huh. place for a lot of people. But if you don't feast intermittently, and again, um, we might call it Sabbath, you know, the, the secular health industry calls it like refeeds or, um, Weird. uh, what does Ben Azadi call it? A carb, a, a, a flex day or okay. a cheat day or like everyone has known Weird. this concept forever. Yeah. They just have a different name for it, uh -huh. you know, but like, if you don't do that intermittently, your bot, your metabolic rate will slow down because yeah. your body is smart and because God made it. And it's yeah. just like, well, if you're not going to feed me, I'm going to slow down and meet you where you're at. So not only is it sad, a sad, sad way to live where you're not, where you have this just like mindset of restriction, food is bad. I can't have it. I'm never going to have it that sad, but yeah. also you can actually sabotage your own goals if okay. you don't feast intermittently. Yeah. Um, and so it's just interesting that like these patterns are and of you know, course, you always, know, always true. It, it, one way you can apply this, let's say you really are morbidly obese, well then maybe start off just feasting once a month, you know, um, you know, diet, 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 try to really tackle the problem that you're dealing with. Yeah. And maybe dial it back to once a month or something. But, um, you know, the normal practice in our household is we feast on, on Saturday night and we try to do it once a week. And, um, uh, it, I mean, for me, uh, you know, I, I guys hate dieting. I, I really don't like dieting. Yeah. I, you know, it's just, it's, um, but I'm in a situation where, you know, I have, uh, diabetes in my family. I right. have, um, um, you know, uh, you know, high, which means high blood pressure in my family, you know, so yeah. there's certain things <clears throat> that, uh, I think it's prudent for me to, to not as eat as much food as I have been or as I used to throughout the week. Yeah. But the nice your, thing, your carbo your refined sugars and your carbohydrates were limiting throughout, yeah. throughout the week for that reason. Right. Yeah. Right. And I, I love, you know, having a burger, you know, with, with the bun and the fries. I mean, it's just, just fantastic. But so I haven't been doing that. Um, uh, and, but what happens is, is I actually look more forward to Saturday night now. Yeah. That's I know. True. And, and, and so I'm like, okay, I can be disciplined, you know, Monday through, uh, Saturday and then Saturday night I can eat, you know, a bigger meal, eat bread, eat, you know, I really don't eat bread during the week. Um, you know, so there's certain things, but it really actually helps the, 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 I don't, I'm not even on a diet. It, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm on a food plan that's good for where I'm at with my yeah, body. Yeah, you know we, what I'm we look at it like a tool that yeah. we're utilizing right now. Right. It's not, hopefully not going to be the yeah. long term. And so it helps. Plan. So, but that helps. The feasting thing helps. It, it makes you not feel kind of bummed out during the week that yeah. you didn't get to eat your fries or whatever, you know? Yeah. And it makes you look forward to Saturday and it, and it helps you kind of be able to kind of get through the week and not look at food as like an enemy that you're, you're, you're doing, you're, you're friends with it. Yeah, you like it. Uh, you eat maybe a little more particular way during the week, and then and then Saturday you kind of cut loose a little bit. Saturday. Well, night. I mean, it's oh. it's it. There's so many studies that have been done that show that people in the long term have better adherence to whatever plan they're on if yeah. they get these little. That's right. That's, yeah. These little feast yeah. days, these little yeah. cheat days, whatever you right. want to call it, right? right? I hate the word cheat because I think that's I stupid. I like yeah. to use the yeah. word feast. I think it's way more healthy, yeah. but um, yeah, it, it's actually a proven thing. So as it turns out, uh, just honor the Sabbath, you know, and you'll you'll be healthier. That was a water sound to get to our next one. Oh, is that a transitional splash? It was a transitional splash. That... Yep, like okay. water break. We're a water break. And so you. we're at uh, number four. So again, we're kind of talking through the those who just entered the room. We're kind of talking through the top 10 truths that we kind of wish we knew 20 years ago about, you know, health and uh, fitness. Oh, my gosh. I so love, number four. I love number four. I wrote it myself. And it actually just comes really nicely, I guess, on the tails of yeah. uh, the one we just talked about. And number one. I said, if having the body you want causes you to be a crabby, obsessive, miserable cow, that's not health. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies. Well, and it's so self-centered too. I mean, oh, well, and and a so lot of backward. the yeah, it's very backward, and a lot of the imagery that women think, or a lot of the body that women think they need, yeah, is probably I would I would venture to guess it's it's probably not as informed from their husband. But more informed from like the magazine cover. Well, and like other women and other women running yeah. that industry. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, no, I, I mean, so many things, so many things here. But you ladies probably know who you are. Men could do this. I mean, I, it, men could do this. Yeah, hundred percent. I think it, they could do it. I, I see. Women it. tend to deal with more of the body yes, inside of things. Yes, they yep. do. And I just, you know, so if, like, regardless, like, re regardless of what you're doing or. Or, or whatever, if being at the weight or the physique or whatever that you 
are just so, you know, stuck on being at, if it causes you to just be a miserable person, yeah, miserable yourself, like you just are like, I'm tired. I feel bad. I hate life. I can't eat anything. I can't, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can't even, oftentimes that comes uh, with like low energy. You're not able to do stuff. Mm -hmm. It usually, it usually comes hand in hand with that. And even worse, if it's causing you to be a crabby mom, yeah. a mom who um, won't go places because of the food temptations, <laughs> a, a mom who's- And a wife who a husband doesn't want to go to bed with. <laughs> yeah, or the husband's just like <laughs> you know? walking on eggshells yeah. because you're just an yeah. absolute monster. It's yeah. like you have to go to bed at seven o'clock because you're afraid that you might eat something. Like, yeah. like it, it can, women can take this really far. Right. And you can become so obsessed and so turned in on yourself. Um, that's not- um, usually where you're at there, that is not physically healthy. Yeah. Okay. You are not in a healthy place right. physically. And even more importantly, so you are not mentally or spiritually or emotionally healthy. And that means it's not health. And I right. think that women can get so stuck on being like, when I'm at this weight, you know, right. whatever you were 10 years ago right. or in high school or just something, you know, whatever that's healthy for me. But, but if that's what you look like there. Right. Or, it, it, you know, even in just the journey trying to get there, that's not healthy for you. Right. It's not. And we need to redefine health right. way more holistically than just a number on a scale yeah, or, um, right. uh, you know, fitting into a certain uh, size of jeans. And I, I hope I'm, I've, I think I'm hitting a lot. I mean, women know exactly what I'm talking yeah, about because right. everybody's the same. It's like, right. it's a certain number. It's a certain pair of jeans. It's like, oh, it's a picture when you were 25 and I just right. have to get to there. Get back there. And it's like, okay, there's so many reasons why you might not need to get back to there. And regardless, no matter how much you want that, if you cannot be in a healthy place, like having a good relationship with food, energy is good, physically capable, you are an actual blessing to your family, you like being around <laughs> your kids. How about this yep. one? Your kids like being around you. You're the kind of mom who can say yes to going on a hike and say yes to going to this place because you are in a good place in your head right. and, and like in your functional and your husband and you have a good, you know, a good relationship. And he's not like walking on eggshells because he never knows, you know, who the heck you're going to be that day or how cra crabby you're going to be. Right. That's health. Right. Um, both physical the physical and the emotional and the mental all and the right. spiritual all come together. Right. And it's just something to consider because I feel like, especially as we get a little older, we can get us ladies can get really, really hung up on that. Yeah. And health is so much more a, a big picture than just a pair right. of jeans or a number on a scale. And, and, and we got to keep that in mind. I mean, Proverbs directly addresses this, mm -hmm. like striving for vanity. You know, you put this in the category of vanity. I need to be at that weight, that number. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Or just this very like blinders on, like right. that's health. Yep. And when it's just, it's often right. not. And that's, you know, and it's that's, often not. That can be placed under the category of the sin of vanity. Oh, and oh Proverbs, totally. Right? Totally. And just miss completely. And, and, you know, what is it at the end of Proverbs 31? Um, like beauty is fleeting. Yep. Uh, but, A woman who fears the Lord. Yeah. Yep. I mean, like your soul is what goes on forever. I mean, we're all going to get old, you guys. And I'm not right. saying this like, so don't care. I mean, obviously I'm a personal trainer. I care. Like let's yeah. take care of our bodies. Let's do what we can do. But like, eventually like are you, we won't be young anymore eventually yep. Yep. we're gonna we're gonna age we're gonna die eventually right so it's yep. like you know your soul is what your character yep. is what matters far more What's than anything heart. else yeah and i mean keep your priorities straight and make sure that you are defining health correctly and accurately and you're being honest with yourself because that i just see that as being just such a big issue right and so on to uh Let's do our, our sound here. Splash. <laughs> on to thing. number five. This Ooh. is kind of related to that. Yeah, this is. It's kind of related to that. It's a if, really big one. In my if opinion. you love health and fitness, but your kids hate it, you did it wrong. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a big one. You know, I think. How many parents might be like massively into health and fitness? Yep. And then their kids either grow up to reject it or kind of pretty overweight or something. You know, like there's a disconnect. Yeah, like totally rejecting it. Yeah, rejecting yeah. it in all, in all its forms. Uh, and you know, you, obviously you don't want to put your kids in a position where they aren't thriving and they aren't successful and, and maybe it's, it's not their gift. Right. Um, but that's the, that's the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, well, every kid can run for the most part, mm -hmm. maybe not the fastest. Every kid can lift up something. I mean, they're supposed to, God built them that way, you know? So, uh, you know, uh, build a vision for your kids in such a way they're loving kind of the, the. The, uh, you know, you want you want your kids to love your standard and not hate it. Yeah, it's like a, that's exactly right. It's like it's like the same way you would want your kids to embrace the faith that yeah, you have. That's right, right. As opposed to being like, I hate that, and as soon as I can get out of here, 
yep. I'm out. Um, you see this a lot. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, oh, but a woman you. who fears the Lord, she will be praised. Yeah, I really love I, that. I had to finish that verse. That's a really like, good verse yeah. for women who are really into fitness because yeah. it is a very easy ditch to fall in. But yeah. and anyways, you want to get praised the right way, not the wrong way. Right. Um, but anyways, so, so back to number five, if you love health and fitness, but your kids hate it, you, you did it wrong. Yeah. And you don't want to take your standard, which can be good and right and fine, and then um, hang your kids with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, you don't want to turn your standard into a gallows for your kid. You don't want to turn your standard into something that is that is exciting, reachable, fun, engaging, and disciple oriented. Teaching your kids. That's really well said. Actually, that's really well said because I see I see two different things in this business because I obviously work with and know a lot of other people in the industry who are also very into health and fitness. So I see a lot of this and I've watched it played out play out over time. So usually, either um, in terms of mistakes. And things not going well with people's yeah. kids. Yeah. You see either what you said, where it's like, I'm really into it, so you're really into it. And it's this like militaristic, like no sugar in the house ever. We run five miles every day, right. no matter what, like where they just, and it causes them to just hate it, right? right. Or right. like, we're a football family, so you're playing football and I don't care. You know, like that yep. kind of approach. And we uh-huh. all know that. Um, I don't know. You, you, we all know that dad. That's like that can that can be a dad thing, a big time. Um, and a lot of times kids rebel, and they're like, "I do not. I hate this. I hate you. I am not having a great time. You have not loved me in any way. This yeah. is you have not created or presented me a paradigm that is attractive or fun right. or anything, right? And so you can lose your kids, um, in the health, you know, nutrition area of life right. that way. But you know what I see just as often, if not more. I see um, health and fitness people being so obsessed and concerned with themselves Mm -hmm. that their children just sort of fall to the wayside. And I've seen that a Mm -hmm. lot, like where it's like, you're almost too busy for them. You're too busy eating clean. You're too busy getting your run in. You're too busy. Getting your lift out. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, and and anyone who's really into fitness knows what I'm talking about. I I'm aware of this. I have to fight this temptation and I think I've messed up in the past. I think I have not been perfect on this at all where I've been too self-absorbed. Um, and I think you can be self-absorbed about things that might be, you know, theoretically good. Like Uh you could be self-absorbed and be a drug addict. That's obviously all bad, but you could be self-absorbed even with something that is, um, on paper, a good thing, like taking care of your health. right? Right. Like, and I don't think it is objectively selfish at all for a mom or a dad to do something to take care of their health. Not at all. But if you're like so obsessed with yourself, spending so much money and time and energy on your own diet, on your own workouts, on your own schedule, on your own everything. And your kids are like, uh, you haven't included them. You haven't taught them. You haven't brought them along. They're just over there eating chicken nuggets and you're eating this pristine thing. You know, you're like off to the track. You never take them with you. You never uh, slowed down on your run so they can come. I mean, there's been times where I've, I like running with the girl and this is an amazing progression because it pays off to start your kids young and bring them with you. Number one, it shows that you're like, I, I love this and it's, it's a good idea. It's a blessing to my body. It's going to be a blessing to yours. So that's why I'm passing it on to you. Like that's that's why I'm bringing you with me. And also it's like, Hey, I like having you with me (laughs) because I just, I just think it's so easy for kids to be like, they don't want me around. You know what I mean? Like whatever, this is their thing. Um, I'm, I hate it. Uh, mom's just gone all the time. She's at the gym all the time. I never see her. It's just yeah. something that pulls that parent farther away yep. from them. But I used to, when I would run with my girls have to, cause if I wanted to do like a five mile run and they couldn't make it that far for the out and back, I would literally do half of that, like go out a mile with them, yep. come back, Drop which as off. a runner is very yep. mentally frustrating. <laughs> and then I would go out yeah. and then come back again. And like, I know that doesn't sound that big, but just making small adjustments like that yeah. so that you can accommodate them. Now my daughter runs a 540 mile and yeah. I'm trailing behind she's her. Killing okay. She's, so that's where we're at. She's in eighth grade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm scared of them now. And it was a very short time. <laughs> but, <laughs> it was. But, it was. Yeah. They come to the gym with me. I mean, they know how to do it all. And I will, Cash will be, my, our son will be included in this also. He's just the youngest. So we yeah. just haven't. He's just turned 10. Quite, yeah. He's just turned 10. So we're, we're getting there though. We're getting there. And um, you better believe he's going to be in the gym with me and I'm going to yeah. slow down and I'm going to teach and it's going to maybe not be as great of a workout for me, but I don't care um, because uh, I want them to learn. So. I just, you guys, if you're really into it, I think it's okay if your kids aren't into every single thing that you are. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was yeah. actually just talk, talking to Liv today on the drive to school because we're talking about, she's like I just said, she's 13. She seems to be a pretty gifted runner at this point. And she seems to really love it. In the fall, there's cross country and there's volleyball. Right. And this is actually like weighing heavily on both of our souls, Liv and myself, because I don't know that it's possible um, 
to for, do both. To do both. I um, don't want. To I know. Do I, both I know. I knew that would be what you would say. <laughs> and and also, she's not a straight A student, so we got to balance yeah, academics yeah, also. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I, and 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 volleyball is so near and dear to my heart. I grew up. I, I played all through high school. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I love it. And so nothing has made me happier than having my daughters play volleyball, and they have yeah. been since they were young. But I told her, I was like, listen. If you truly love running yeah. and that this is what you want to do, yeah. um, I'm open. Like we're open yeah. to that. Like to you actually not playing volleyball and actually shifting the into shifting. being a runner. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm open. That's just a small example, but like there's a balance. Like, you know, our kids are active. Our kids share our same paradigm. G- generally, we talk it all, uh, you know, about it all the time about taking care of our bodies, being healthy, but the way that they do it might end up looking different than the way we do it. And that's yep. completely fine. You know? And yep. I think that that all has to happen. So just that's check right, with man. your kids, you guys check with your kids. Don't, don't, uh, don't make that mistake. Okay. For uh, number six, again, for those who are joining, we're going to kind of top 10, although this list can be a lot longer. Oh, um, top be, 10 truths. Yeah, I wish we knew uh, 20, 20 years ago, 21 years ago. Why not? Why not? Um, number seven uh, is not nope, nope, six. Right? Oh, number six, word six. It's right if, there. If you care six. more about being thin than being strong and functional, you're not thinking long term. Um, some with muscles. Same, same with muscles. Same, same with muscles. Oh, okay. You well, should just let me read them. Same with them. muscles, but no cardiovascular health. So you're kind of hitting the men and the, yeah. Yeah, the women That's and the, the men. That's the man version of not thinking long term. So yeah. thin, and not, I mean, how many, how many women do you know that are that are thin and can't lift up a, a thing? Most you know? of the women. Who are uh, thin and can't bend over very well to pick up their their kids or whatever? Or there's just uh, they they've worked so hard on trying to keep this some sort of idea of what they think is a good just body weight. A number on the scale a instead of like scale. being functional and strong. That's one thing I've always appreciated about the way you know I'm a um against I, women you know working out for building you know uh, for bodybuilding competitions and muscle and all that stuff. And one thing that you've always, I think, done well is you you were you use functional workouts. You work out for functionality. You work out for being able to pick up your grandkids in, in 20 years. Go ahead and talk. I got a cough. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> that's true. I mean, to be clear, working out for function versus working out bodybuilding style, a lot of those movements overlap. But sure, I understand, sure. I understand oh, yeah, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, but yeah, sure. functionality does really matter to me. And um <laughs> and Sorry, keep going. It's okay. It matters to me um, both in the short term and the long, which is kind of what this point is getting at. And, you know, I, I'm especially see it now um, being almost 20 years <sighs> into this career of training people this whole time. And with the, with the being thin versus focusing on muscle, usually you see women um, being guilty of this. And, you know, in the moment when you're like 25 or 30 and you're like, I did it. I'm so thin. I'm so light. I'm wearing the jeans. Look at the number. I'm 130 again or yeah. whatever. Um, that that's all fine. Um, it might hurt you even then because yeah, usually your muscle mass is low. You're not very functional. You're probably very prone to injury. You might already be on the trajectory towards like osteoporosis, things like that. But as time goes on, you hit perimenopause, you get into menopause. It is going to hurt you so much that you did not take more care and spend more time on just building some muscle yeah. so that you have that lean body mass. And, and we've talked about this in past shows. It is so important for longevity to fight frailty for bone density, yep. for injury prevention. Yep. Um, it becomes a lot harder to build muscle as you get older. It's not impossible, but it is harder. Um, and skinny fat is um, a really bad look the older you get. Right. <laughs> when right. you just have no muscle to fill your skeleton out, like every single, I have never worked with a woman in my life who was ever like, oh man, no regrets that I didn't strength train. I mean, like yeah. every single time they're like, what was I thinking? Yeah. What was I thinking? Like, why did I not do this? I like, cared more or about s- weight loss yes, or, or this ideal weight than, than actually yes, having some just strength like to you. Yeah. Uh-huh. No muscle, uh, you know, very injured, usually depressed metabolism, functionless, can't lift your grandkids. And then they come find you. And I mean, you always try to help people where they're at and they're, it's never too late, but yeah. it's just like, my goodness, start young, start young. And and shift your priorities a little bit so that your main focus is building strong functional muscle. It is so yeah. important. And ladies, it really is hard to get jacked. It really is. Gabe, yeah, always, right. Gabe always feels like he has to throw this little, I mean, and I don't want women to look like she meant. But I mean, yeah. like the honest truth is like most women, most of you could not look that way if you tried. That's true. Okay. Like yeah. they you really couldn't. So yeah. like don't be scared of that yeah. at all. 
uh, it's just really, really hard to do. Now, sometimes girls, I'm just going to take my time on this point because I just want to. Um, sometimes girls do have to adjust though, because if they've been in a body, like their body has been so like under muscled yeah. for so long, um, growing a little bit of quads, growing a little bit of glutes might make you go up in a pant size. And uh -huh. at first you might be like, Whoa, I, don't, I don't know about this. <laughs> you know, I, I'm yeah. not used to this. I don't feel as thin. Yeah. Maybe the number on the scale goes up a little bit because you yeah. actually put some muscle on. So yeah. for so, some, women, some healthy weight, and some this healthy is not weight like on. masculine yeah. muscle. This is like yeah. any muscle. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have like, done. Oh, my shoulder. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So like you might psychologically, some girls are just coming from a place of being so like, scrawny i don't know yeah. a better i'm not trying to be rude but like yeah, there's yeah. no better word to use that you might psychologically have to make some adjustments right. um and that can happen you know and and you got to get over it and you and you will adjust and you will i just oh my gosh you will feel so much better and you will be metabolically um in such a better place <laughs> to you know as you right. age and and you look right. at your life long term and like we like i said um the same goes with dudes who are only concerned with building muscle and uh -huh. how that looks in the mirror, yep. you know, oh, curl, yeah. curls for the girls or whatever. <laughs> um, but they don't um, think about their cardiovascular health. It's obviously funny, cardiovascular health is important for everybody, but women are much less likely to ignore cardio. A lot uh -huh. of times you have to like pull them off of the spin bike to get them to do yep. other things. Right. But men um, often uh, are doing zero to or very little to zero yeah. part of cardiovascular training. And as we talked about, heart disease is a real thing. High blood pressure is a huge problem. Right. High triglycerides is a huge problem. And um, you know, you're not really helping your family out by dying at 65. Right. You're not. So, right. uh, yeah. get on that. Sure. Think long term. It's not all about how you look. Right. Like, think long term right. and um, be a grandpa who can go on a hike with his kids. <laughs> uh, Joy says, uh, this reminds me of something I learned in ballet, both how to be strong and that strong muscles don't have to be large. Oh, that's very true. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a really good point. It's kind of specific. A lot of times when you look at different athletes, it is interesting to see. Um, sprinters versus marathoners yeah, totally, and, totally, because they're all strong in their own way yeah but um w back to when we did um joy we did a, a show a what stop guessing which episode was what on strength training and one of the things that we talked about in that episode was the difference between training for hypertrophy which is growing muscle um and then uh strength and actually when you train for strength uh, your muscles can and often do not get a lot bigger right you can get another way to say that is you can get a lot stronger without getting a right. lot bigger some girls need to get bigger like they got no muscle yeah. they need to grow some and i have girls all the time who are like please help me grow some muscles i can't yeah. it's so hard for me you know right. like I, I want to grow but it's all about like your volume your rest periods your reps you're you know, eating, there's you're a, eating and, and how much you're eating yeah, yeah there's a science uh -huh. to it but you're absolutely yeah. right you can like a ballerina or a gymnast are probably two very good examples of people who are incredibly strong. strong yeah yeah but not necessarily superly. big superly strong wow. superly strong where yeah. did that word come from but again girls please don't worry about it unless you are that one to three percent of the population of women who actually can get really bulky easily it's very rare it's very hard to do so don't let that hold you back don't let it hold you back Okay, on to now we're at number seven. We are at number seven. seven yeah, yeah why don't like, you read that? Okay, my voice seven. is going out. I would say this should probably be our last one for right. the day. We got through seven. Mm -hmm. I thought we were only going to get through like five, yeah, and I feel like be. that's really good. And we can yeah. do another. And I'm just going to keep adding to this list as I think of things because yeah. there's so many things. We just need to mark that we got through number seven. I'll mark that. Write that down, yeah. and then we'll just keep adding to it. Okay. Um, I love this one, and we've talked about it before. Number seven is it is not weird. Put some of these around it to eat mostly real whole food. And I think someone asked a question. He said, Gabe, how do you, Mr. F, Gabe, how do you eat and how do you encourage a fellow man to keep on a healthy eating lifestyle when I don't see the same visible health detriments as my wife does? Yeah, yeah, classic <laughs> man story. The wife's yeah. like falling apart and her hair's falling out, uh -huh. her thyroid's tanked, and the guy's like, I feel yeah. pretty good. I'm feeling all right. <laughs> I feel fine, yeah. yeah. Um, that's, I'm, I'm teasing you. That's actually quite normal. Men's, yeah. I mean, you guys are hormonally so m much more simple. And um, uh, just by God's design, I think um, your your bodies handle stress better. Men's, uh, yeah. This is yeah. why you guys go to war. Okay? God built us to handle stress he better. Did. Yeah, and that's yeah. why uh -huh. you you guys go out there and you you take a beating when women's, we're not, we're not so much made for that, right? right? Our bodies are made to like sense stress yeah. and then, you know, 
we lose our period because our body's like, no, right. <laughs> no something's about to happen. Not good. Yeah. 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 Not enough food, famine, war, whatever. Uh-huh. So like our bodies are just, men and women are just so different and it's actually really cool. But, um, in real life, oftentimes it plays out with a woman's body, especially coming after like many babies, which is stressful. Right. It's, yeah. it's a wonderful thing, but yeah. it is stressful on the body to carry a child, deliver a child postpartum yeah. and then do it again and do it again. We can end up in a really bad spot. Yeah. Right. And then you add in with the girls years of dieting, usually one way or another. So we have this uh, metabolism that's way less lower than yeah. our husbands because men just don't tend to diet hard right. they just don't there's exceptions i know there are so you can find yourself in very different places so that said um what i just said here with number seven it is not weird to eat mostly real whole food mostly that is what we try to do whether yeah. we're talking about gabe and gabe and i are interesting because you're the man i'm the woman i definitely don't handle stress very well I'm always watching my thyroid. I'm always right. watching my adrenals because I just, they're, my stress bucket is full. Yeah. Um, you actually handle stress better than me, but I'm way more active than he is. Right. And that's not necessarily normal. I work in the industry, so I know we're not a right. very normal example. Um, so the way I eat versus the way he's eating right now, not the same. Like, for example, I'm eating more carbs right now than he is right. because your facet insulin is a 24, mine is like a two. So, right. and a lot of that is due to, I don't have diabetes in my family. That's one. Yeah. And also because I'm very active, m- much more so than the average person. Yeah. But the thing, the common thread, and this is our kids are included in this also, is that we just try to make most of the food that we eat like whole, real, nutrient, de- nutrient dense protein. food. Yeah. Yes. So, like the majority, and this does not mean that we don't have some feast foods. It yeah. doesn't. He'll, he'll still have ice cream sometimes <sighs> on Saturday, you know? So uh, I will get my kids a happy meal sometimes. I'm not going to be that mom. I'm not. Yeah. But we do not do that once a week. We certainly don't do that every day. Yep. It's mostly meat, eggs, fruit, vegetables, nuts and seeds. That's our staple. And I, I, I know that sounds kind of oversimplified, but if most Americans or all Americans just did that, it would solve so many problems. Yeah. I mean, maybe not all, but like, pretty dang close to it for so many different reasons um some of the big (laughs) ones being that um there's no weird like terrible ingredients in those foods so you're not getting the seed oils you're not getting high fructose corn syrup you're not getting msgs you're not i mean it's just like so many things that that we're putting in highly processed food now again i think the poison's in the dose if you have it here and there it's probably not a big deal but if you're eating it constantly like all day every day right that does terrible things to your health. And then number two, real food is so easy to moderate. Like you can just eat a regular amount. You can yeah. eat your steak. You can eat your broccoli. Yeah. You can eat your potato and be like, I'm good. And yeah. you're good for a while. Right. You can't moderate Doritos. Right. You can't moderate chicken nuggets. They're designed for ranch Doritos. Are I mean, so you can't, and, and everyone knows so it. Good. Everybody has that food. You can't moderate. You can't, I mean, okay. Most people can't, the people who are true moderates, um, gosh, that could be another one on the list. True moderates are rare. And uh, every once in a while in my career, I have run into a woman or, who can literally have half of a brownie and then just walk away. Right. The brownies are still there yeah. all day. House smells like brownies. They're just there <laughs> looking at her. She's home all day. No problem. And it, unless she's lying to me, you know, yeah. I, I, I'm like, I am blown away by you. There are not the very self discipline. There are not. To not finish well, I that think brownie. it's like a genetic and like a chemical thing. Okay. Like, like I really do because so many people. It's like if I, I, it's either I have none of those foods, right, or I eat the whole bag. It's right. not. There's no in between. Or I eat till I'm sick. You know, but no one says that about broccoli. No one says that right. about a steak. No one says that about scrambled eggs because it's not. It's just not having that same chemical effect on your yeah. brain. So. Again, long-winded way of just saying um, our, our macronutrient breakdown right now looks different. And like our kids who are super, super active, they're eating like all of them are like eating like they have two hollow legs right. because they're growing yep. and they're doing so much with their body. So right. they're eating tons, but we're all eating about the same stuff, right? The same kind yeah. of stuff. And one yeah. thing that's really helpful, Mr. F, with um, this sort of paradigm of just trying to eat mostly real food, trying to eat protein at every single meal, three square meals a day for the most part. Um, is if you are cooking what I like to call transitional meals where all the ingredients or the macronutrients are broken up. And we naturally, because we're such big meat people and Gabe's such a big griller, this comes very naturally to us. But I've noticed that with other families, um, like other women who are making dinners, they tend to be one pot people. And that can be a lot harder. If you've got someone like, okay, I need to not have carbs right now. And then I'm like, well, I can have the carbs, but I can't have gluten for my thyroid. A lasagna is not going to work. You know what I mean? But if it's a hunk of meat, 
a vegetable and a carb, like rice or a potato or whatever, the people at the table who that is going to serve, they can have it. And then the people know who it won't. It's fine. I'll just have the meat, all the vegetables, maybe I'll eat eat extra meat and it's completely fine. So I do encourage people to move towards cooking that way more. And to some of you that might, might seem kind of foreign, but you get used to it. It's a very, very, I think, healthy um, simple way to cook. And you just need to get good at grilling. You need to, you know, buy a good quality olive oil, learn how to season your food buy good quality salt, things like that. And, um, yeah, that's really, really helpful. So, Very good. Very good. Well, we got through my, this has been my second show today. Seven. We got through seven. Did you write that down? I did. I okay, did. This I, list I is going right to grow there. guys. This list is going to grow. So I, we I'm, went up, we ended up going through our top seven out of 10. Right, that of our was top more, 10. I thought we were only going to get through like five. So I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. Our with top 10 what we did there. out of seven that I wish I knew 20 years ago. And we're adding to this list. I think it's kind of a fun exercise for us too to kind of think through some of these things. But uh, uh, make sure you guys share the show. Uh, when it comes out on podcasts, it'll drop later on our podcast today. And uh, you can kind of grab that audio version of it and share it out too. And then lastly, we encourage you to download our Fight Lab Feast app. The show comes out on our app too. Yeah, And our app's just a great way to just kind of stay more connected with with us instead of all the noise you might experience on your app store or stuff like that. So go to Fight Laugh Feast, type Fight Laugh, Fight Laugh Feast in your app store and you can download our app. Other than that, anything else, baby? I don't think so. Okay. I, yeah. I well, think, well, are we going to be back here next not, week? Not next week. We're both traveling. I'm traveling. You're traveling. Yes, yeah, so we might take next week off. So next week off and then we'll be back uh, the first week of June. Yeah, there's going to be a couple weeks this summer where we have to record on a different day though. Yeah. so summertime guys we'll bear with us yeah but we'll be as regular as we can yep thank you guys for tuning in yep, appreciate thank it. you it's water break bye we live in a culture built upon lies shot in the back. white supremacy where truth beauty and goodness have been ripped from their foundations and left to each man to determine for himself the christian is to be a light in the midst of this dark world and yet for decades we have sent our children to be educated by those living in the dark public education secular in nature has finally arrived at its natural end. The utter absence of God from all instruction and the imposition of a state-sanctioned worldly morality. Some labor to reform public education, battling school boards, lawmakers, and the ever-evolving ideologies of modern education. We seek a different way. Not a new way, but rather a tested one. A proven one an ancient one, one rooted in the word of God, guided by history, pursuant of truth and excellent in everything, one that for centuries past has developed the greatest minds of every generation. We aspire to resurrect the educational paradigms of old, partnering with Christian parents and raising virtuous, eloquent, and wise young men and women by providing them with a Christ-centered and classical education. While the world around us grasps for something novel to save them, we will stand firm upon the rock which we know does not fail. My name is Jamie Piles. I joined Samaritan in December of 1996. We were homeschooling our kids, and we were already thinking outside the world's box, if you will. And I saw a little tiny classified ad about this new kind of idea I'd never heard of before. My first reaction was, that's the kind of thing that we would do, isn't it? And so I finally called the number, talked to them, and the more I asked them questions, the more I liked their answers. 